What happened to a soldier from Fort Hood missing for almost two months now? The Army now launching an investigation into allegations that Vanessa Guillen was sexually harassed. I believe it was the 19th of January where she calls me and she tells me that she can't take it anymore. And she potentially uh, tells me she wants to commit suicide. This is something that I never really talk about, but I feel like it's, it's the moment to do so because people don't understand how bad um, sexual harassment and assault in the military can take a huge toll on someone's life. My name is Mary Guillen. I am Vanessa's older sister. Um, we've been fighting, advocating, uh, asking Congress to do the right thing for the last two years since my sister was murdered. She was very, very happy. She took everything as a joke in good and bad ways. We were actually happy that she was going to be stationed super close to home, three hour drive. But unfortunately, we did see that her demeanor started changing uh, when she actually situated in Fort Hood. Um, we didn't know what was going on at the moment. We just thought that she had a lot of work. It's hard to tell because she was so good at hiding um, her emotions. Even with new documentation that was recently uh, leaked by the court by mistake, and also some investigations from the Army, um, it confirms that she had been uh, getting sexually harassed at a very early stage in her service. Unfortunately, she still passed away um, April 22nd um, in the hands of somebody that we don't know if he sexually assaulted her. We believe he did um, because there's no reason as to why he committed such a violent crime. It was a lot of agony the day that um, she didn't answer her phone and I tried to stay positive and not think of worst case scenario. Um, somehow I got in contact with her chain of command, her staff sergeant actually. He had no idea of what was happening until probably like the third time he called me back and said simply, oh no one's heard of her since about noon today. That's when I decided that I had to go in person and like ask them like where's my sister. I was meeting people left to right, uh, sergeant after sergeant, and I was so confused at the time. I'm like, what's going on? I guess the difference that it made was that I was actually there in person seeing what was going on and they couldn't just tell me over the phone, hey, we're working on it or uh, we're waiting to hear from her. And um, sure enough, after 24 hours, I, we did military police report. That was a joke. It wasn't until my parents uh, got there the Friday of that week and talked to CAD and my mom right away felt like they just basically didn't care. We started um, protesting outside the gates of Fort Hood um, every Friday. We never failed a Friday. We started uh, raising awareness and social media. That was a big tool for us. We just never gave up. We actually moved in to Killeen area to live there for the two months that we were doing search parties on our own because we, we felt like waiting on military police or CAD, they're their own jurisdiction. They would never actually tell us what was going on or every time there was a supposable meeting, uh, they would be like, there's no updates. So what was like the point of those meetings? Like, who do we have to go to to find answers? When people found out a little bit more about the story, I guess they felt compelled to come and help us, you know, ask, where is she? We always had a lot of faith in finding her alive, no matter the circumstance. Um, but there was also the side of reality uh, that that wasn't going to be the case, that we weren't going to find her alive. But when Gregory Morales was found, it was just like, it took everyone by like surprise. Like, you know, how much time passed from his disappearance to how they found him was because they were looking for Vanessa. Um, it just lets me know that the army never cared. They never actually put effort into looking for him or investigating. So what were they gonna do for my sister? Justice has so many different meanings for a lot of people. For some people, justice is putting the person that caused damage in jail. In our case, we've tried to keep her memory alive and her legacy growing. Uh, we were successful by doing so with uh, the bill that got passed in December uh, by both the House and the Senate. That was a, like a great achievement.
for us. Uh, we fought very hard because we didn't want to see any other service member go through what my sister went through. And it starts at the top. They have the power and the authority and the budget to hire people and get them to do the right thing or to change the law under you know their jurisdiction and be like, hey, we're gonna start holding people accountable. Um, it's not until the aggressors see that they're being held accountable and punished is that they're gonna stop doing what they're doing. For us, uh, we fought very hard because we didn't wanna see any other service member go through what my sister went through. And I wanna let them know that each and every single one of the survivors, you know, your story matters. Um, you were a great part in this change. Um, and just to keep, keep advocating if you can.